Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem n queens 2. Now we did already solve the first one on this channel and I would say that this one is actually a little bit easier than the first one. So I do recommend checking out the first video as well if you want to. And this problem is very similar to the first one. I would say it's like 90% identical. So the problem is again about the n queens puzzle which is a given an n by n board. Now the dimensions could be anything. In this case, you can see it's four by four. We want to place then four queens, whatever n happens to be, in such a way that none of the queens attack each other. Now, if you're not familiar with chess, a queen, it can basically move in any of the four horizontal and vertical directions for an unlimited amount of spaces. And it can also move diagonally, top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right. So our goal is to place the queens on the board such that they're not attacking each other. You can see that for a board of four by four, we can do that two different ways. So in this problem, we want to return the total number of distinct ways that we can satisfy this puzzle. In the first problem, we actually had to create the board for each of the possible ways. But in this case, we just have to count them. So you can see that in the first solution, we were returning the unique solutions. In this case, we're just counting them. So you could actually just take the first solution, take the length of the output array, and then return that. But I'm going to explain this from scratch and then code it from scratch. Logically, this problem is a backtracking problem because we kind of have to brute force it. And when we do brute force it, we think about it in terms of choices. Let's say uh, to make things simple for us, we're picking on the first row. We're placing a queen on the first row, right? Because what we're trying to do is just generate every single combination of how we can place queens and try to place them such that they're not attacking each other. Uh, do it for the first row, do it for the second row, do it for the third row, do it for the fourth row. If we're able to make it to the fourth row and there is a valid position that we can place the queen, then we found a solution and we can increment our result. If we don't find a solution, then we don't increment the result. But the goal is, to find all possibilities and to make sure that there aren't any duplicates. And the way we're going to do this backtracking, it's actually going to eliminate duplicates by default. Let me show you how. So first row, we have to pick a position for the queen. Let's say we just start with the first one. Now, second row, we have to pick a position for the queen. But also before we get to the second row, we know now that we can't place another queen over here. So before we get to the second row, we're kind of just going to take that out of consideration. We're going to remove that. And since we're going row by row, we don't really have to eliminate these positions, even though technically they have been eliminated from consideration because we're going row by row. But now as it comes to time to choose a value in this row, we can pick any of these three. Let's just pick the first one for now. And then afterwards, after we generate the possibilities doing it like this, later we'll backtrack, reverse this decision, and then try all combinations that start like this and then try to generate those valid ones. But since uh, that was eliminated, we're also now going to eliminate this from consideration. Actually, I just realized this is a good point to talk about the diagonal case. Yes, uh, these are not uh, attacking each other horizontally and vertically, but diagonally they are. So actually it turns out we can't put a queen over here. Now it's pretty easy to detect horizontally and vertically, right? For this, uh, this uh, queen was placed at this column. So we're just going to eliminate all future uh, possibilities at that position in this column. But for diagonal, it's not so straightforward. But there actually is a clean way to do it diagonally as well. And that's kind of the trick that you have to know. It's really hard to come up with this kind of trick. But when you do, it makes the code a lot easier. It is possible to kind of do it without this trick. Uh, let me just show you. This queen is placed at this position, right? This uh, position is row zero, column zero. Now, if we go diagonally in this direction, and I call this the negative diagonal, but you can call it whatever you want. If we go diagonally like this, we're going to go to the right by one and then down by one. When we go to the right by one, we're increasing the a column by one. When we go down, we're increasing the row by one. So notice how the difference between these two values is always going to stay the same. Let's say we're doing it a uh, row minus column. We're going to get uh, zero minus zero. That's zero. We're going to get one minus one. That's zero. We're going to get two minus two uh, as we go, you know, diagonally, let's say from this position, 
we're, we're gonna get zero. Now, if our queen was actually over here, you can see that that's again gonna be true. Here we have zero minus one, let's say that's negative one. Here, we're gonna have one minus two, that's negative one. Here, we're gonna have two minus three, that's negative one, it's gonna be the same idea. Uh, but what, the negative diagonal is not all. Like suppose from here, we actually also have the left diagonal. I'm gonna call this the positive diagonal because you know going in the other direction, it shows like a positive line. But again, you can call it whatever you want. But in the positive diagonal, it's gonna sort of be a little bit different because here you can see, okay, we're at row zero, column two. When we go left diagonally, we are decreasing the column by one and we're increasing the row by one. So it's not that the difference between these two values is gonna be the same as we go uh, left diagonal. It's actually that the sum of them is gonna be the same because as we move in this direction, we're incrementing one of them, but we're decrementing the other. So that means that the sum of them is going to stay the same, not the difference. So it's kind of opposite, but the idea is still the same. So here zero plus two is two. Go uh, bottom left, one plus one is two. Go here, two plus zero is two. So that's the main trick that you have to know. After you know that trick, this problem becomes a basic binary search problem. So we're gonna eliminate all the right diagonals for this, eliminate that, eliminate that, and eliminate that. We're also uh, gonna eliminate all the values in this column. Uh, there's no left diagonal, so don't have to eliminate them. So now we have two uh, possibilities to choose from this row. We're gonna, uh, let's try this position. Okay, so we're gonna eliminate all, uh, you know, values, uh, po you know, positions in this column. And technically, you know, we're eliminating that as well. And just uh, for clarity, I'll say that we're eliminating the values in this row as well. Uh, also, we're gonna eliminate the right diagonals, right, going this way, so that's not a possibility. And we're gonna eliminate the left diagonals, that's not a possibility. Notice now how in the third row, we can't put the queen anywhere, so we have to backtrack. We have to say that we made a mistake, we can't get any solutions with this. So now let's consider if we put the queen over here. I'll just fast forward and tell you that this won't lead to a solution either. You can tell that by you know looking over here. But generally, I think you probably get the idea of what's going on with this algorithm. A thing to notice though, how we're not ever gonna have duplicates with this is because just the nature of backtracking, every time we reverse, we're making a new decision that's never been made before. We might have multiple solutions where a queen goes, for example, in this position. But if that is the case, it must be because this uh, queen was you know, placed somewhere else. Instead of placing it here, we put it over here and that led to a different solution. That's the main idea though. In this case, the upper bound for the time complexity uh, is roughly, uh, let's analyze it. So every time we go through a row, we can choose between n uh, positions where we can place the queen. The next one will be n minus one uh, positions, et cetera, et cetera. So that is ultimately, I think, n factorial. Uh, so that's how many different uh, possibility, possible board situations with the queens we could have. Now to build each one of them, we have to put place a queen n times. So I think the time complexity is n factorial times n. That's the upper bound for the time complexity. Okay, now let's code it up. Okay, now let's code it up. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually create a couple hash sets. And these are gonna be used to make sure that we, you know, how we eliminate possibilities from the board. For example, this column set is going to tell us which columns we've already placed a queen in so that we don't place another queen in the same column, unless we of course backtrack and then remove that queen. Uh, the other uh, sets are gonna be for the positive diagonal and the negative diagonal. Remember that the positive diagonal is defined as uh, when uh, r plus c are constant as we're going bottom left and negative diagonal is defined where r minus c are gonna be constant as we go in the bottom right direction. So I'm gonna create a variable a variable for our result. I'm gonna initially set it to zero. And the way I'm gonna implement the backtracking actually is going to be in a nested function so that, and the only parameter we're really gonna pass in is the row that we're in. So the base case for this backtracking is if uh, we reach 
the last row, or rather, we've already gone through the last row, so R is equal to N, which means we're kind of out of bounds here. If that's the case, though, if we even get that far, that pretty much means that we found a valid board. And when we find a valid board, we can in uh, increment our result. It's not in this function, so uh, you have to use the keyword non-local. Uh, this means that we're not referring to a local result variable, we're referring to the outer variable. Uh, and I'm just going to increment result by one, and then we're gonna return. Otherwise, if we don't have a valid board, we have to continue to build the board sort of. And so what we're gonna do now is go through every possible column that we can. So uh, let's say C in range N. Of course, though, we know that there's some positions in, uh, that we've already used uh, possible columns. So what we're gonna say is if Col uh, this column is not in the set of columns that we've already used before. And if this is not on the same positive diagonal that's already been used before, so if R plus C is not in positive diagonal, and uh, this is not a part of the, there's a typo, uh, this is also not a part of the uh, ones that have been used in the negative diagonal, so not in negative diagonal. Uh, actually, to make this simple, we could say, say that if it is in any of those, uh, if uh, basically we are in a position that we're not supposed to be in for this queen, we're going to continue to the next iteration of the loop. We don't want to place a queen in any of these positions. Uh, one thing I kind of noticed is uh, since in this column, we're not actually automatically skipping the possible positions. Uh, like this loop will iterate n times each time. So it's the technically the time complexity I was talking about is not necessarily n factorial. It is actually going to be n to the power of n the way I'm coding this up. But after that if statement, we know that we are at a valid position. So at least so far, and we're going to continue backtracking uh, to the next row. So r plus one. But before we even do that, we remember we have to update our sets before we make that recursive call. So to the column, I'm gonna add the current column. To the positive diagonal set, I'm going to add a new value that's not already in the positive diagonal set, which is R plus C. We're now using this particular positive diagonal line so that the next queen cannot be placed on this same positive diagonal. Let's do the same with the negative diagonal, add R minus C. And then after those, we're gonna do our backtracking. After our backtracking is done, we're gonna basically do all three of these uh, and reverse them. Instead of adding the column, we're gonna remove the column. Uh, and same with the other ones. And that actually is the entire code for the backtracking. So the only thing left for us to do is call the initial backtrack function starting at row zero, let's say, and going up until our base case, which is N. And after calling backtracking, we know our result variable is going to have been updated. So let's go ahead and return that. Actually, and one thing I forgot about when we were doing uh, this conditional is, so if our column has already been used before or the positive diagonal has been used before or the negative diagonal has been used before, then we wanna skip this position. Uh, but we have an and on all of these. If any of them are true, we want to skip it. So let's make sure we change these ands to ors. I'm really sorry if that caused any confusion. Okay, now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.